Did Google just end all encryption as we know it? Just what does it mean for the national security of this country? And more importantly, what exactly can we do about the rise of quantum computing? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it. Okay, so this is a story that is seems like just some nerdy uh, finance stuff, but in fact is a pretty stark uh, leap forward, a quantum leap forward, if you will, in computing. And this is because of Google's announcement of Willow. And Willow is a quantum uh, computer, something, or rather a quantum chip capable of performing calculations that uh, would take a conventional supercomputer, in fact, the most powerful supercomputer in uh, on the planet, uh, to perform some of the calculations that Willow performed would take a conventional supercomputer 10 septillion years. Uh, that would mean that the most standard, the fastest supercomputer on Earth would take, uh, again, longer than the age of the universe to solve some of these problems that Willow was able to solve in under five minutes. And what makes this incredible is that Willow is a quantum computer, right? Part of Google's effort 10 years ago uh, to create a super, a super, super computer, right? Just like a computer can do calculations that would take uh, a human being, again, an almost comically large amount of time, for example, solving millions of permutations of chess games. Conventional computers uh, are able to do that um, with relative either, or, or for example, conventional computers, uh, uh, you know, performing large calculations. Uh, the supercomputer is almost too, or quantum computers are to conventional computers what computers are to human beings. That's how big of a leap forward this is. But it comes with some problems, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I want to establish first here that quantum computers have the potential to be absolutely, utterly game-changing uh, because of their ability to perform sort of massive calculations, particularly when you mesh them with the development of AI. Again, you're talking about something that can do a level of uh, calculations or modeling um, just infinitely more complex than anything a, ca a supercomputer is capable of now. Uh, but there's also some really dire consequences, particularly for encryption and cryptography. Now, before we break down exactly what a quantum computer is and why uh, everyone should be freaked out about the state of cryptography, uh, I wanted to first mention that if you haven't hit that subscribe button, you really should. If you appreciate this type of content, um, it makes a big difference for me, right? It helps send the message to YouTube that the content I'm making is good and well-informed and interesting. So after you do that, Again, Caltech has a nice little prime on quantum computers, right? And what makes them so awesome is that they can use, well, some of the weird quirks of quantum uh, physics to perform uh, computations that, a, that are simply too large in scale for a typical computers, right? They point out that quantum computers, for example, have chips, circuits, and logic gates, uh, and their operations are directed by sequential instructions. Now, both of them use a binary code of ones and zeros to represent information, but the problem is that but while both computers use these ones and zeros, in classic computers, the bits are in binary, which is they're either on or off. A light switch, for example, would be a one-bit system. It's on or it's off. Magnets pointing up or down. Quantum computers use quantum bits called quibits. Quantum physicists love weird names, but classical bits can represent a one or a zero. A quibit can represent all both of them simultaneously until its state is measured. But also, the quibits can be entangled, meaning they can be linked via quantum mechanics to one another. So this superposition, being in two places at once, and being linked to each other, the, the placement of one bit impacts or talks to the placement of another bit on a fundamental physical level. Uh, and in fact, the entanglement is instantaneous. It's lightning fast. It's faster than the speed of light. It means that quantum computers can reach capabilities that quantum compu that regular computers simply can't. But here's a problem. Is that encryption? Right now, 
one of the most widely used forms of cryptography, the thing that keeps your bank account secure, the thing that encrypts WhatsApp and, and Telegram and Signal, the thing that pro that encrypts many government systems is this RSA cryptography, right? And it takes advantage of the fact that essentially you have a public encryption key, but a, the, the decoder ring is private. And the unlike the old school toys you get in a box, this decoder ring, the private key, is usually consisting of two large prime numbers generated by an algorithm. The product of these numbers is used along with an exponent to create a public key, meaning that it can be very easy to encrypt, but it's very hard to decrypt, right? And so the information, right, that can only be decrypted using a private key relies on the fact that it is extremely time consuming to factor the to work your way backwards to uh, the original prime numbers that are multiplied together to get the encryption key. So it's very easy to encrypt it, but it's very hard, right? Factoring is just a lot more work than multiplying, right? And so because of that, you can do, you can make it very easy to encrypt something and very hard to decrypt the private with the private key. There's, and for conventional computers, factoring massive numbers is really, really, really hard. Uh, it would take, you know, again, septillions of years. There's a problem. Back in 1981, someone named Peter Shore came up with an algorithm that said, in theory, if you had a quantum computer that could be both have bits on and off at the same time, it might be able to factor these large numbers very efficiently. Meaning, and Shor's algorithm can break all prime number factoring based cryptography. This is a huge fucking problem. Why? Because a bunch of things that are really important to the international system, to our lives, are governed by this and to the national security state, right? And so before I talk about exactly what sort of stuff uses this, I wanted to also mention that if you want to support the channel, you can do so on combatvetnews.com. We have uh, a bunch of tiers for membership. It's Patreon, right? New videos drop Tuesdays and Thursdays, uncensored combat footage from the front lines, deep dive analysis, and the best way to support me and keep me independent. So again, thanks to all of you that have become members on Combat Vet News. The new video is actually dropping tomorrow, well, today for you guys. Uh, so it's going to, and we're hopefully going to get a little more exclusive footage from the 130th. Right, they just sent me more stuff in their group chat. So, uh, what exactly uses RSA cryptography? Well, the problem is again bank accounts, right? Uh, a lot of U.S. businesses, a lot of communications between uh, almost all cell phones, right? And so this becomes a problem. Imagine if someone like China was to build a supercomputer or North Korea was to get access to a supercomputer. What are the things they would do with it? Well, they'd probably break immediately the encryption on the phones of the president, the secretary of defense, national security advisor, just about anyone else uh, who operates in this encrypted space. Um, and again, even if they can't get access to secret information, uh, just by being able to, again, break into, for example, the scheduling app of the National Security Advisor, the calendar, uh, you would learn a ton. Uh, you, they could also do things like breaking into the banking system, right? Someone, the Secretary of Defense still gets a paycheck. And if the Chinese could hack or hold hostage that or potentially get access to those banking statements, well, you can imagine how incredibly devastating something like that could be. And Again, while the most top, top secrets might be still be classified, again, diplomatic cables uh, might not be. And so this is sort of one of the core problems of this encryption system is that protecting these systems from quantum computing, from quantum hackers would be a massive problem. Now, here's the thing. Is it really the potentially devastating event that we think it might be? The answer is maybe. Right now, the Willow chip still would have a hard time factoring really large numbers. It's not, you would need to create a purpose-built quantum computer. But if there's one thing we've learned, like with AI, it's that this growth is exponential. And right now, Google's shown that it's possible to have this Willow supercomputer. They've also supposedly figured out a way to just make it more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of sort of a high error rate in these quantum uh, bits because there, there's, you know, 
they're atoms. They're pretty sensitive little guys, or they're not even atoms. So they figured out a way to correct these errors. Uh, now, the problem that we get into is when you have these kind of, uh, is that it's not really uh, it, what's called a cryptographically relevant computer, right? This is a quantum computer that actually is designed to break cryptography, right? That When that machine is built, then they have to worry about, again, what's current PKE encryption. Put it bluntly, it is specifically a cryptographically relevant quantum computer rather than quantum computing in general that is of concern to cybersecurity professionals. But here's the problem, right? It, the best analogy would be something to say like, well, uh, you know, you've developed, let's try to think here. Um, the, the uh, for example, the first car, someone, or the first airplane. Right now, this is like not quite the Wright brothers flying, but this is the first time someone said, yo, I put a weapon on this plane and it works. And somebody goes, well, we don't have to worry about air dominance, air power. That's not a factor. They put a machine gun on one of these planes. It's to shoot down reconnaissance aircraft, guys. People on the ground are not going to be threatened by planes. But the question is not, do we need to evolve a massive technological leap? No, the technological leap happened, right? This this willow represents like the first, this is like the Wright brothers flight. People say, well, just because you can fly the plane, nobody's building planes for war. Well, the problem is not the, the now the development, is it technically possible to create a quantum computer? Just like Someone, the question wasn't, is it technically possible to create a flying weapon? Now, it's just a question of desire. Is someone going to desire to create the flying weapon? And that is the number one fear, I think, that we all, that smarter people now have, is to say, listen, Google's shown that it's not a technical limitation to build a crypto, uh, a quantum computer that breaks encryption. It's just a question of desire. And that is the problem. Of course, it, it, right? Google currently has the technology, but look at AI. Look at as soon as OpenAI released their chat GPT and we're able to disclose some basic aspects of how it works, dozens of other companies threw together their own cheap, uh, large language model within literally months. And the fear is that something like this is going to occur. That's Google said, listen, we've proven it's possible. We're the world leaders here. Um, that every other country, remember, Startups, sure, but also the Chinese government is seeing this and saying they have no qualms about building a encryption breaker, right? So they'll sit there and say, whoever Google did it, we want an encryption breaker. Oh, by the way, do you think the U.S. government's going to say, oh, let's just let China develop our own encryption breaking computer? They're going to build their own, which means that, again, the U.S. government, right, even if it was someone like the CIA, they'd say, well, U.S. citizens, we won't hack their phones because of privacy protections of the Bill of Rights that prevents search and seizure something that the U.S. government hasn't respected in the past, right? The NSA's uh, 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 data collection scheme, for example. But they may say, but for every other citizen abroad, the U.S. government may say, we're going to crack your phone. And again, it's hard to even conceive of how powerful a quantum computer could be, right? When you're talking about these things where it's solving uh, problems that would take a computer the entire length of the known universe to solve, this... Uh, uh, Willow is solving in five minutes. Could it break all encryption? Could it simply just walk through everyone's encryption? Uh, this is sort of the scary reality. Again, everything from the group chat with the boys in WhatsApp all the way to Ukrainian forces and Russian forces communicating in real time over signal, breaking all of that would be a potential world beater. Now, is it really the end of everything? No, there is such a thing as post-quantum cryptography. And it's something that you can see that Amazon Web Services, uh, for example, is saying, hey guys, we actually are already migrating some of our most sensitive computers. We spent five years developing a post-quantum computer algorithm uh, and working with the National Institute of Technology to roll them out. So this is one of those examples where the US government actually gets it, it, it delivers effect right? They've seen the problem ahead of time. They actually have implemented a post-quantum computer type of encryption, something that even a quantum computer would struggle to break. Um, again, 
They're way too technical for my little pea-sized army brain, uh, but something called a module lattice-based key encapsulation mechanism standard, uh, the mod module lattice-based digital signature standard, and the state hash-based, stateless hash-based digital signature standard are all things that have been developed by the government where it says, listen, this is a way that you can protect your data even if someone were to develop this quantum computer. The problem is, and I, I'm, I'm, low to medium confident that the U.S. government already, for their most sensitive data, has some level of post-quantum uh, encryption. Because again, if Google's unveiling it, they should at least be prepared for the reality that China could have it as well. But that doesn't protect WhatsApp, Signal, your bank app, your Uber app, PayPal, anything that's password protected, anything using kind of the standard internet traffic encryption. The other huge problem, and I'm sorry to tell you guys this, is that it would turbo destroy all cryptocurrencies, right? Because all private keys could be decoded like that. So if you are somebody who believes that in 50 years we're all going to be transacting in Bitcoin, the answer is not unless some someone centralizes the decentralized currency and comes up with a new way to encrypt it. So uh, um, I hate to tell you guys this, I think we're seeing Bitcoin and a lot of these cryptocurrencies, once they build this, this cryptologically relevant quantum computer, uh, they might just be cooked. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Huge thank you to folks like Bill Collier, Robin Coburn, Graz Martin, Gina Crescent, Chris Gorsuch, Francis Carius, AL90, and all of our lieutenant tier members. I could not do this without you guys. You guys are the ones who make this whole thing possible. I appreciate you so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.